Joe Bonanno is back and he has brought another book and some other wonderful recipes. No one has to be able to eat and run like a firefighter, but a fast-paced life is no reason not to eat healthy. So now there's the Healthy Firehouse Cookbook. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first episode of American Firehouse Cuisine. I'm veteran firefighter chef Joseph Bonanno of the New York City Fire Department, and I've recreated a nostalgic New York City firehouse where we're going to share and prepare healthy, hearty meals together. So before we ever get to any cooking, I want to take you for a tour of this set that I built myself with some of the props I've gathered over the years being a New York City firefighter. A uh, pretty cool place to enjoy cooking. So we'll start at this corner. Generally, I'm not going to enter through the door. We have a brass fire pole. I'll show you later in the tour that I'm going to be coming down the set uh, to enter the set every day. And our guests are going to come down the pole, too. So I came in basically through the entrance to the studio. So what we did here is we decorated the door with a, a very nice picture of the Manhattan Bridge. And it nicely frames out the, uh, the Empire State Building. It's not an old picture because you can see the cars are from the... Uh, 2000s, but it definitely the bridge is a beautiful piece of architecture and uh, all New York. And uh, okay, over here, I have a nice watercolor that I picked up uh, at a yard sale. John Hameson, his name is, and he's been around since 1900. And he's done a bunch of that's the Brooklyn Bridge watercolor of the New York City skyline. Um, what I have here, another yard sale find. I got a lot of the props at yard sales and stuff. Um, another find was these gigantic tools that kind of make sure that we tell everyone there's a cooking show, not a firehouse show. Um, and believe it or not, there are a few guys I work with that could eat that much food and use that to eat with. Um, next up is a, I wanted to put up a map of the world because there's firefighters anywhere from Antarctica to Greenland, from California to China. The language that we have, we may speak different, different languages, but the language of firefighters is kind of universal. The humor is the same. They all sit down and have meals together, just like we did in the New York City Firehouse. And that's what I'm looking to recreate. So anywhere in, anywhere on the globe, they're sitting down to have meals together, uh, a tradition that's gone on since there were firehouses ever built. Uh, next up, this is what I call the commissary locker. This is what we had in New York City. Now, I know some of the other uh, firehouses around the United States that I've been to. Um, they have like shift A, shift B, shift C, and they have a refrigerator, a lock on the refrigerator, and shift A can't eat shift B stuff. New York City, we just had a one commissary locker, one refrigerator, and what we had in the what they call a commissary locker was basically staples for cooking. It would be cooking oil, um, spices, herbs, uh, salt, pepper, mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, just the basic stuff that you would need. But what we would really do is take the the rig, we call it, or the fire apparatus, the fire truck, we would take it out to the local food store to buy, let's say we were having chicken cutlet parmesan, we would buy the chicken cutlets. Breadcrumbs would be in the commissary locker. Uh, oil would be in the commissary locker. But the meat, uh, maybe a salad, stuff like that, that you couldn't refrigerate, that we would pick up. And it was one of the coolest things about it. And no, everybody thinks that they would see us in the supermarkets in New York City. They would think that New York City pays for the meal. They don't. Um, they also thought we were off duty while we were shopping and cooking. We're not. If you notice, if you're ever in a food store, you'll see the firefighters always have a radio with them. And with that radio, if I was shopping for chicken and the lieutenant outside, Joe, we have a run. We drop what we're doing, drop the food, run out to the truck and, <laughs> and away we go. And a lot of times it's, it's an extra, um, challenge for somebody that cooks because <laughs> Sometimes we'd have to be back and forth to the store three or four times to get the necessary ingredients to put the meal together. Same thing with preparing the meal. We'd be in the middle. It's an extra challenge as somebody that likes to cook, trying to time it with uh, runs and alarms and stuff like that. Uh, next up is a more condensed version of the world map because most of the firefighters that I've visited, I haven't been overseas yet to visit any firefighters, but I've visited a bunch of firefighters across the country, yes, from California to Maine. And again, the tradition of sitting down to a, a family-style meal 
was always there. So what this board is going to represent is that, let's say, um, and what I'd like is that, welcoming you into my firehouse kitchen, that firefighters from other parts of the country, California, Montana, Maine, Florida, Texas, will send me their recipe, send me a patch. We'll get to it later. There's a patch board up there. And if we use the recipe on the show or have one of the firefighters from those areas come as a guest, um, we'll put their patch up on the board, use their recipe on the air, and then we'll, I'd like to fill up this board sooner or later. Like let's say we get a barbecue recipe from Texas, we'll leave that up there. So hopefully by the end of the season of shows, we'll have this whole map filled up with recipes. And, you know, unique to their area. You know, I'm sure Texas is barbecue and Maine is clam chowder and stuff like that. So uh, I'd like to fill up this whole board. Right now I only have Morro Bay, California, which is where my uh, brother lived. The Tampa Bay area, which is where I live now, and of course, New York. So that's the only three pins we have on. Looking forward to getting your feedback and pins and recipes and patches and stuff like that. Uh, next up, this is a just a map of the New York City subway system. Pretty amazing if you look it up, how it was built, how it can transport you just about anywhere in the city. Uh, used it many times myself when I was detailed to different firehouses and stuff like that. Just keeping it New York around here. So. Um, this uh, drawing right here, uh, it's actually on my website. Uh, Lee Hammond, a fantastic artist from uh, Kansas City. What a talented woman she is and an unbelievable teacher. I went out to Kansas City for a week and I took her art course. And in a week's time, I was able to produce that. So that's my personal dedication to 9-11. Of course, it's myself and my brother, Michael, who worked the rescue and recovery at Ground Zero. My father, uh, who did 34 years in Engine 88. Uh, his helmet's over there. We'll show you in a little bit. Um, and he worked through the South Bronx in what any firefighter knows anything about New York City called the war years, which was the 60s and 70s when New York was just fires galore every night. Later in my career, I actually got to work one tour in Engine 88, uh, which was kind of nice knowing that my father was there. And now here we have the pole hole. <laughs> and I know there's a bunch of jokes there. We can't go there right now, maybe on another episode. But uh, it wasn't actually fit, called, a, we called it the pole hole. It was kind of a nickname for it. We're on the first floor here. This is a recreated studio. So what I did is built a platform above, uh, above this studio so that we could slide down the pole. What we had is a bunk room where we all kind of slept between shifts and stuff like that. And then we had, there wasn't really a door on it. There was a door at the ground floor, but on the top floor, there was just a little gate and get out, jump out of bed, throw your boots on, down the pole you go. Every firehouse has one. I understand they don't use them that much anymore, the poles, because too many guys got hurt. But we'll talk about that in a minute because we do have a pole here. Um, this is a recreation of what uh, most firehouses don't have, and I think it might be unique to New York. They have a house watch desk. It was generally in the front of the firehouse. Uh, it was a small desk area. You had a little TV, a radio. Years ago, they had radio, no TV. Then eventually, they let us have a TV there. And our shifts were six at night till nine in the morning, nine in the morning till six at night. Every firefighter that was working had to sit here for three hours. We would divide up the shifts. Of course, six to nine isn't bad, nine to 12 isn't bad, but midnight to three in the morning, three in the morning to six in the morning, sitting on a hard wooden chair, waiting for alarms to come in. Um, you know, it was, But it was kind of a nice place to read a book, concentrate, get away from the craziness in the firehouse and whatnot. Uh, you know, and they're also at the front of the fire because they could actually knock on the door, bang on the firehouse door and say, hey, we got a fire. So I think other departments have just a general alarm. They don't have to sit at a desk at the front. But I wanted to recreate a New York City firehouse. And this is every fire, every New York City firefighter will remember. It might be Boston, Philly, too, but um, every New York City fireman knows who had the watch, the watch desk, what you did there. And I have a, an old, um, an old um, rotary phone which some of the newer firefighters probably don't even know what this is. And believe it or not, they actually have a little, um, I can hook my cell phone into it and this will ring and you can actually speak on it. But I'm, I can't wait to get a newer firefighter in here and have them use the phone and actually figure out that this is the way we used to call people. <laughs> so, and that'll, that'll ring. So that's great. And we had, like I said, a little desk, but it would be in the front of the fires, but I had to kind of condense it into here. Uh, this is, um, what this is here is what's called the assignment board. I was very lucky to find this again at a garage sale. It was kind of weathered. It looks like one. 
But most of the, you know, I was trying to recreate New York. Almost all of them were green. A blackboard is generally black. But New York City, for some reason, they had these bl green blackboards. So I was able, lucky enough to find this. And what this has is your assignments for the night. The meal generally wouldn't be on it. It would be in the kitchen, but we recreating a kitchen here. And it would be assignments, roof, OVM is outside vent man, forcible entry, can man, and guest is going to be whoever's going to be a guest on the show cooking, and we'll have the meal price up there. And you can see $3.50, how old school that is. I'm sure it's more like $10 now. But we, yeah, we were putting meals, to get, big meals together for $3.50. Um, this is what's known as a fireman's hook. And it's a real one. You can see it's all beat up. Um, I don't know where I got it, but I did get it probably at some pile of junk in New York at a yard sale or something. But uh, I think it was broken when I got it and I had to replace the old candle. But this is actually the can man would have this and a water can, which I'll show you shortly. And this gets poked through the ceiling and this end pulls the ceiling down so that you can see if there's any fire going on in there. So you'd carry this in a can. That would be the can man's assignment. And now, the ultimate New York City firehouse, your brass fire pole. So I'll be coming down that to start every show, not like I did before over there. So now I had to take into consideration if my guests were firefighters and they actually did slide down poles that they can do it without breaking a hip or a knee or twisting a back. But this is a cooking show. And I want to keep in mind that we're going to have people who are restaurant owners food people, cookbook authors, and the like, male, female, young, old, maybe disabled, unable to slide the pole. So I said, well, how can I, how can I do this? And I was going through a motorcycle jack, and what I found was a, um, it's actually a door grooming table, and it has a hydraulic piston and an electric foot pedal. So what I can do is I hit it like this, And this will go up to four feet. So your head and shoulders will be up in the, in the pole hole. And what they can do is just keep one hand on the pole like this. And I have a foot pedal over there. They can lower and wave, come down nice and slow, like, and without worrying about twisting anything or hurting anything, and then step off here and join me at the cooking station. So if you can't slide a pole or you're effect, what is it, tactfully put pole challenged, we can still get you to come down the pole. Okay, this is a um, modified coat rack. Of course, in a firehouse with a truck that's 30 feet long, you're going to have 50 of these helmets on each side. So this is a condensed version and very meaningful to me um, because I have my father's helmet, 88 engine, in the South Bronx that he did uh, 34 years. And uh, this is my helmet, Ladder 129, where I did most of my career, and it was a wonderful place to work. And my dear brother, Michael, was in Ladder 7. And I have him nested between myself and my father. And that's a story for another, another episode. And what I have here is my coat. And you can see there's my name and my badge number on there. My original fire coat. You can see it's pretty beat up and melted. It's been through its share of, its share of battles. This was an older coat that I found, an older fireman's coat. And it's... Um, it's rubber, which is what they used initially because they're spraying water and the water repels. But what they found out is when it, 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 melt, it would melt and it would burn you even worse than what they came up with, which is Nomex, which uh, you'd have to be at 1600 degrees, I think, to get burnt through this thing. Here, it's like this would melt and it would get burns on your wrist. You'd get burns on your neck. Yeah, it kept water off, but it didn't keep fire out from melting. Um, so now we get to the main part of the show, which is the cooking station. But we still have quite a few things to explain here. Um, and yes, I'll talk about the fly paper. Um, what you see above here is called a pompier ladder or scaling ladder. We use them in the fire, fire department, New York City Fire Department. Any, any city that had high rises would use these before they had tower ladders and um, aerial ladders and things that could reach six and seven stories. So what they would do is... It's not meant like that. It's meant to stand up like that. This end here, you can see it's blunt. And this long piece with these barbs on it, the firefighter would take this like this, bust this through the window, set it, and then these barbs would grab on the windowsill. That hook there, you'd climb up those rungs. When you get to the top, that loop here, you'd have a leather belt 
with a clip and you'd clip into it. And when you lean back, the barbs actually dig into the window and it's actually firmer. So now your hands are free. You can assist victims out. But what you would do to get to the higher floors, you'd have two or three of these on the truck. He'd pass the next one up. You'd go into the window, cross over, and you climb up. Then he passes that one up, cross over, climb it to that. So you can go 20 stories if you want with three ladders and just keep going and going and going. But they didn't, they use them at the fire academy. I got to be trained on one. Um, and it's, it's, it's a pretty scary thing at seven stories to be leaning back like this with your arms out. So this one would break in the window that would grab, you can go up as many floors as you want. Um, and this here window, um, I put in and I put a nice scene behind it. It's actually an old shower curtain that I stretched over a frame and it's the Brooklyn bridge. And you can see the, the memorial lights from the former world trade center site that it's at. And that could light up behind there. And we have a working sink here, which is where we'll do dishes and stuff like that and keep cleaning when we're doing sanitary stuff on the show. What I have here, this is called a hydrant wrench. Okay, you can see this hexagon shape. This goes on top of the hydrant. Pull it like this. On this end, it's called a spanner. The hose has little nibs on it, and you tighten the hose with this end. Put that on the nib, and you can unloosen the hose with it. And uh, my lieutenant actually gave this to me. Because in my exuberance as a probationary firefighter, they were having trouble getting the hydrant open. And I, I got so, I guess, uh, exuberant is the right word. And I put my feet against it and I pulled it as hard as I can. And I put a, a bend in it. And he said, I've been on a damn job for 30 years. I've never seen a guy bend a bend. And he can't use it anymore. Take it. Keep it for a moment, though. So, of course, if I did that now, I'd probably be in the chiropractor's office for about a month. Um, that's a water can, holds two and a half gallons of water. That is an official New York City Fire Department water can. As I said before, the pole and the can, the can man would carry that. And you use compressed air to fill it. And you'd be surprised, a good firefighter knows what he's doing, can come into a room like this that's on fire with two and a half gallons of water and hold back enough with that spray hand over it, believe it or not, hold it back enough to safely go in and kind of do a little bit of a search. And by the time the engine company comes in with a hose and knocks down the rest of the fire, he can save actually save lives with that. And I've seen it done. You know, keep fire at bay enough so a guy can bail out a window or something like that. Um, okay, this is, uh, you see on the thing, it says forcible entry on the assignment board. This is a halligan, it's called, and an axe. And they're taped together. Usually you carry them together like this. has a flat end on it. At this point, we go into the door jam and... You know, they have hydraulic tools for that, that you can carry with you, but hydraulics leak, they can go wrong, something can happen. But a good firefighter knows what he's doing with these two tools, can open any hood, open any car, go through any doorway with this, if he knows what he's doing. So it's old school, but it, it works. Um, this is the patch board that we're going to use. And you can see there's a few patches up there. I'd like to fill it up with patches from firefighters from across the country. We'll send you a patch. If you send us a recipe in a patch and up there, I have correction department. I have friends from the correction or police department um, and stuff like that. So we'd like to fill that board up with patches from all around the country. This is a, my father gave me this. This is the Mack truck. Almost all the fire engines. This is one of them, 88 engine. All the fire engines, I guess, used to be from Mack. I think Mack, Pierce, um, Seagrave, with a few top brands, but Mack was always considered the, you know, you've heard the expression built like a Mack truck. Well, he must have swiped this off a fire truck that crashed or something or was being repaired. And he gave that to me when I was a young boy and I saved it. And now we're going to use it on the set. Um, okay. This very unique to the uh, Northeast and Midwest and any, any cold climate firefighter will recognize this as a cast iron radiator. We used to love these things. They would cling and clang all night and steam would go through them. You'd hear them steam. And they put out a tremendous amount of heat. What we would use it for if we came back from a working fire, throw your coat over it. It was frozen and it would melt. And then what we would do, the gloves were leather, so they tended to get soaked. And what we would do, you know, firefighters are so innovative. <laughs> Let's say we were having green beans for dinner or creamed corn. They would hollow out the corn can like this and put it on a glove. So any, uh, any cold climate firehouse, when it was snowy out, You'd pass by a fire, go into a firehouse, and you would see, you would see this, and we would put them on, and every 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 radiator would have gloves on it like that. And yes, of course, there's there's always a comedian, and has to be a wise guy with his gloves. But yeah, they would dry the gloves out within an hour, 
they'd be done. Um, TV set, one of the reasons I have a TV set is yes, you could watch TV, but the other reason is if guests can't make it to the show, hopefully we can do a Zoom thing and pull the TV out and rotate it, be over here cooking, and they'll Zoom. Let's say a recipe from a Boston firefighter is gonna make clam chowder, he can make it and walk me through the steps, we'll make it here and stuff like that. And hopefully we'll get guests, but if we have to get them by Zoom, that's how we'll get them, or maybe we could show you something technical on there. It's a nice uh, friend of mine made beautiful uh, needlepoint of uh, horse-drawn fire engines which is pre this fire. Well, actually, no, this old firehouses in New York actually were converted and that's where they put the kitchen, where they used to put the horses. It's a very good friend of mine, Bill Bresnan, New York City firefighter. That's him in the right corner there. He gave himself a little tricep action. Um, but uh, we became friends at a St. Patrick's Day and I hadn't seen him in years. And I just, I knew he was an artist. He did about 20 different paintings. Um, and this is one of them, and it's called Firehouse Kitchen, and I just ordered it from him. And he said, you can see him on Etsy if you want. He's got about 20 different paintings. But what he had on the bottom of the painting is Firehouse Kitchen, where we solved all the world's problems. And that's one of the things I loved about being in the kitchen together and the camaraderie that we had together in between alarms, preparing and sharing a meal together. If you were getting divorced, if you had work to do on your house, personal problems, House problems, car problems. It was all, firemen were unbelievable in, in the talent that they had. I worked with uh, ones that were doctors, chiropractors, attorneys, car mechanics. Somebody knew how to solve the problem. And generally, if we couldn't solve it, we found a way to make a laugh out of it and maybe get, it, get each other through it. And that's the brotherhood and sisterhood of the fire department. So that's also what I'm looking to recreate here. I don't think I, I can prepare and share your meal, but if we could solve some of your problems, I might even be able to solve it because I've had a few of my own that I had to solve at the, at the kitchen table. And this is my dedication to, to, there's one in every firehouse, probably one in every office, probably one in every factory or place that you work. There's a guy that knows everything, that really knows nothing, and always has some wise comment to say, when you're preparing the meal, after the meal, it's too much, it's this, it's that. So we got a little recording we're going to play once in a while when he's, when he's in the mood. And, uh, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I did that my dedication to the guys that I worked with that were a pain in the neck sometimes. Um, and this, uh, oh, okay, under the picture we have what's called a pike axe. Unlike the axe over there, you can see it's pike because it has a pike end on it. And which is when you see a fireman's axe, this is generally what you see. And that pike axe, then you can break through a floor, you can break through a door, you use it as a lever to do. You can't use it with the halligan because of the pointed end. But generally when they say a fireman's axe, that's what you see. This is what they call a pull box. Uh, I think the bigger cities had them before they had telephones. Because once you got a telephone, you could call in, there's a house on fire. What they did is every other block, there'd be a box on the corner. You'd lift this, you'd pull this. Now this is box 642. There's no significance to it, but it's a Manhattan box, actually. It would go to dispatch. Dispatch would send it to the house watch desk, and it would say, ladder 129, respond to box 642. Old school, the guy at the house watch desk would take out a box with index cards, pull out 642. We would drive the apparatus to that corner. That doesn't mean the fire was on that corner. But generally, when you get to that corner, you could see... The fire there'd be people standing there they'd be pointing you knew what was on and yes of course there was plenty of kids doing this pulling it and we would get what's called 1092 which is a false alarm so and that brings us back to the manhattan bridge and where i entered the show from now on i'll be entering via the fire pole and that takes us back oh one more thing early on the job when i got in the fire department and yes i know this is a cooking show but i just did this because it's fly paper and there's flies on it. But don't get crazy, all the food people and restaurant people. They're all fake flies. They're plastic. But I got the fly paper and I put them on this because when I first got on the fire department, I worked in a East New York, Brooklyn firehouse. And th there's the firehouse cook cooking away. And over what he's cooking is this, like this. And I'm like, I'm a probationary fireman. I'm not going to say, hey, excuse me. And you're cooking right on maybe the flies are going to be worried about food safety. And so I just did that. And, but believe me, that'll be gone. I just did it to it'll, any of the older firefighters will know exactly what I'm talking about. I just did that for a, a gimmicky thing to bring a laugh to the show, but that'll be gone and we'll be all clean. And yes, look, they're plastic flies. They're fake. Even the roach is fake. 
So that brings us back to where we start the show and we'll end the show every day, which is at the cooking station. Any kitchen, and for some, a firehouse kitchen, can be a place of comfort to share both the joys and sorrows, and of course, the comfort of a well-prepared meal. There's lots to see in this kitchen and plenty of stories to tell, but it is, after all, a cooking show. So be sure to tune in to the next episode where I'll be preparing my very best recipe, Firehouse Bread Pudding, from my latest book, American Firehouse Cuisine. A portion of the proceeds from the show, appearances and merchandise, goes to the Firefighter Behavioral Health Alliance, an organization that works to prevent first responder suicides and assist the families of the survivors. There's an expression, and I believe it's unique to the New York City Fire Department. It's called take up. When your work is done, the command is given to take up, as in take up your gear, apparatus, and members, and return to the firehouse. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and I welcome and embrace your thoughts in the comment section. You can learn more about the show, see recipes and news at www.americanfirehousecuisine.com. Thanks for watching. The time has come for us at American Firehouse Cuisine to take up and may God bless.